Soulbind, in addition, I guess well, all of them, but typically it's picked with like one combination. And then you have three active spells that all have Keeper utility and damage the attached. And the Kalalember, classic, it's been nerfed, doesn't matter. Still a great opener. S still works. Still see it a lot. Along with the Grimstroke, though, right? These, these opening has been like, maybe it's not the openings we see every time, but these hero picks we're seeing more and more of. Yeah, but the, pro the problem with Caudal Ember is now everyone is playing it. You play it in pubs, you play it in all the games, and you're getting used to it. You know what they're going to do, you know how much damage they do, you know exactly what they're up to, right? So that's why we see that more and more these heroes are kind of starting to lose and mm. to fall off when it comes to win rates. So to me, I said I wanted Navi to stick to their guns. This is one of the ways, like you play something that you know how to do, but still this combination has been feeling more and more underwhelming to me as the tournament progresses. Could they be falling into a bit of a trap where VP are well aware and easy to deal with this? I mean, these heroes, Ember's been first picked, or rather first phased, I think, all of our series today, and a couple of them yesterday. Kala was banned last game, and was banned, I believe, in every game in the Liquid, uh, Liquid Secret series. So I'm going to have to object and state for the record that Harry Freak is talking nonsense because this combination is excellent. Can we get the, the win rate like at the beginning of the tournament and in the later stages of it? It's definitely falling off. Do you have the numbers handy? Because I, I, can, I can pick up my phone and pretend that, that I have the numbers. It's a fact that 72% of all statistics are made up. So unless I see Including the that data, one? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> That's straight from Wikipedia. You know, <laughs> I remember learning in high school that, you know, you couldn't use Wikipedia as a source. You couldn't trust it. And it's just like, you know, shout out to Wikipedia. It's one of the only things I donate to every year because it's free and that's beautiful. And it's literally all of human knowledge on one website so in you, multiple different uh, languages. I yeah, but, Wiki but on Wikipedia, you also have on the bottom pages, like the reference. So you can just take the information from Wikipedia and put the reference that they put in. So I guess that's... that's You're fun. literally ruining... High schools, high schoolers' plans right now, because that's the strat. It's been the strat since like 2005. It always worked too. Other thing you can do, not saying you should play drugs or anything, homework. but if you take, this is specifically for people that are multilingual. If you take essays in other languages about the topic you need to write about, and then just translate it to English, yep. mess with the synonyms, boom. What's even, what's even better, right? Is you don't even need to just translate it. They have them now. All the like they've done the great translation, right? So it's like. Perfection. No. They don't need to right click. But then people figure out that you're plagiarizing. Yeah, but then you just mess up a few words with it. I mean, sure, but then you might as well just do it in English. <laughs> it still comes up in the search. <laughs> I don't know. I don't trust like right clicking Google Translate or any of that stuff because some of that translate definitely doesn't work to Russian. Well, We've there's experienced another, this. Hang on. There's another strategy My where you take some essay, put it through the translator twice. So you go from English to Russian, Russian to Chinese, back to English. Oh God! And then you mess around with it, make get it to make sense again, and you'll yeah, you get it. We've definitely thought about this a, a hell of a no, lot. No, no, no. This is my, my <laughs> friend. My friend did this. He's talked to me. I didn't go to school. Probably should have. Nah, Not you're really. fine. Yeah, Dazzle, I love this hero. I'm surprised we don't see it more often. Another VP special. Um, I expect it to be core, though it obviously could be support. You never know. Uh, uh, do poison touches stack? I believe they do. Yes, they do. That's pretty cool combination. And this is something VP has been known for as well, these weirder Grimstroke combos. So if you poison touch somebody mm. and it applies twice, then it's like it's aoe twice. It's a ton of damage. Ooh. Spicy. And it's physical. So you expect the... I actually would like Slug. to see the Dazzle on, on a core, but I, when it's been picked up this early, plus they have a last pick, I kind of feel like we're going to be seeing a support dazzle plus with the slarks slarks likes to get those right clicks off during the laning stage mm. i guess though a core dazzle with like a deso axe that would be fun to see and we'll say this is a cool uh, pick here because slarks already good cuz it hunts these two supports yeah and they can't do a damn thing about it in addition you deny ember mid cuz slark mid i believe just handles him and you get that level advantage which makes you snowball hard but you also have the threat of an aggro trilane I don't think you want to do that into a coddle, but it is an option, especially with the Dazzle Grimstroke. Eh, never mind. I take all that back. You just put it with Grimstroke. You're going to be fine. 
<laughs> no matter what you put top, it's Rubik plus a melee hero most likely, and Grimstroke Slark is going to be a-okay. Did you just theory craft something in your head? It got to a point and went, ah, never mind, and just... Yeah, it was a bad idea. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta shut those down. Plus, I mean, Dazzle mid against the Ember would do better than the Slark, I feel. It... Sure, it's still open. You could potentially uh, last pick a support. I just think knowing VP, they're more likely to last pick no one's hero. Um... Beastmaster is sort of, it, it, it's good against Slark in that you can find him, you can control vision, which is difficult against a hero that can constantly scout out your wards and yeah. find them. However, your laning phase isn't super strong, and if you get a good, uh, if you get your packed off before the roar, you know, it's not, it's not reliable lockdown against Slark, and currently Navi have none, which always frightens me, because it means that you're really on a timer, and inevitably Slark, especially with the new Scotty, just kind of takes the game down himself. Plus, he has a Dazzle in his team, so even yeah. if you do get the, let's say, lift into Roar, he just gets uh, graved, and he can jump out, live, then we can see if the Ember can actually run him down, but at the point where he has a BKB, I don't see the Slark dying right now, and I'd really like to see Navi actually address the Slark directly. Though, how do you do that when you have a Dazzle? Uh, I really wanted to see, like, an Axe. Was it banned out? No? Hmm. Don't believe so? Nope. No. Bloodseeker was the ban from VP. I really agree with that one, because that's your, your hard Slark and Pangolier counter. Like, you okay. cannot play Dota against that hero so with these two. Smart decision being made, for sure. Plus, really nice synergy with the Coddle and the Beastmaster as well. Plus, it... It's a flex pick, it can be mid and safe lane, and is also one of the heroes that works really well with the Coddle in lane, because you can spam the, the second spell, so... Definitely a nice... a nice band, though. I'm always afraid when I, uh, when I see a Bloodseeker. You can just run into a fight and die. That, that can happen to this hero. We today saw Nico Baby playing it really well, mm. but it's always a, a problem with this hero, because you need to play it a lot to actually have the feel of how deep you can actually go. I was going to make a joke, but it would have been inappropriate. Come on. Ooh. That's Real it. quick from Navi to lock the, it in. Still nothing to really deal with the Slark, but this tempo from Navi is insane. Like, you have so much catch, you've got vision control, and we've talked about the weakness of having these two squishier ranged supports, mm -hmm. but when you have three cores that are just going in, especially one being SF with that in Rush BKB, Volker. and hell yes, no one Invoker, one of my favorite player hero combos. Really, I just love this hero. And it's all about the tempo. Now, Navi, you're going to have an impossibly strong mid-game lineup. But later on, Slark is king. It'll be really cool to see how it plays out. Okay, again, definitely, uh, like, even drafts. Uh, I'm not sure here. I think, I think I'm still going to go with... Oh my god, I'd go with Navi, but when I saw how no one <laughs> handled Magical last game, I, I would suspect SF to win against the, uh, against the Invoker, but I'm not sure that's gonna happen. So that's because, that's why I'm a bit leaning more to VP. Yeah, you know what, I I'm gonna just go hard for VP because I forgot, like, Invoker Pangolier. This reminds me of, like, way back in the day, I expect a Quas Wex here from no one, and your mid game's just too strong. Tornado, Rolling Thunder, Ice, well, like, Navi, you're gonna need multiple BKBs to take this, and Ember Spirit's gonna need a hell of a game, but I just don't know... You, you can't get a good game against Dazzle Pango in your, in your safe lane. That's really tough to deal with, and I just think VP's gonna have Navi's number right now. So there's too many missing pieces for Navi at this stage. I mean, you never know. They could just get a couple of bonus hero kills and melt towers. They certainly need fewer fights to win, but they're on a clock, and that's not a spot you want to be in against Virtus Pro. Yeah, if, if Navi gets a good start on the SF, he has some decent items, just stands in front with these guys behind him, they can't really run into him. It's going to be hard for them. But is he going to destroy this Invoker in mid and actually have that snowball? I don't think so. Okay, well, our commentators are ready. Which way are we going? You said definitely VP? I'm going to go VP as well. VP all the way. All right, Lyrical and Trent, would you agree with our panel? Are you riding the VP train into this 2-0? Or are you hoping for a third and final game? I mean, it could kind of go either way, right? Like, I'm sort of thinking about this in terms of, like, a fight. Navi's coming around with, like, a, a strong right cross to the jaw, just trying to knock him out of the game, and, and Virtus Pro got to get some wax on, wax on magic going on and just sort of <laughs> dodge away for a little bit. Trent, are you picking up what I'm putting down? Wow, I don't know if anyone's picking that up. 
I definitely appreciate the Invoker. We talked about last game, kind of hoping it was going to find our way here through the draft, and uh, no one's got it. So, uh, Alacrity Dota. That's been the the Invokers I've been watching. It's all about the Alacrity. It's just fantastic. And the Slark, yeah, he he enjoys some attack speed. Mm, sounds Go real beat. nice. I, I'm excited, man. I can't wait. Uh, Navi have time and again sort of surprised me with how strong they can look. Um, but Virtus Pro, when they're on form, dude, it's hard to deal with. Uh, and after that last game, the, the ability for them to just sort of hold back and like accept that aggression that was coming at them and then eventually, uh, you know, turn it back on to, to Navi's dome. It, it looked good. It looked real good. Yeah, I'm going to definitely be watching a little bit more of the mid lane, though, after that last match, as, uh, as Harry, Harry Freak was pointing out. It uh, whew, got out of hand pretty fast there in favor of no one. So uh, rotations, do we have to worry about that, really? Not so much. Looks like the, the side lanes will have quite a bit of the action. I, I don't see any mid heroes, you know, rotating in here or anything to, to try and mess with the, uh, the SF or the Invoker. So SF should be relatively free to kind of spam the wave and, uh, and go farm neutrals if he can make it that far. Uh, versus this invokers. One thing about all these invoker games that I've been watching lately is like you just can't lane against this guy right now because the regen's just insane. Like, how, how do you harass this guy? It's, it's completely impossible. He's six point three right now when he's under tower. That's pretty insane. Yeah, that 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 that's, that's pretty crazy. Um, I guess that one of the bonuses that you could maybe have with it is like if you can just manage to burst him with magical with like you know, a triple raise or something like that, then it could work out better. But you, you need to probably have somebody to help you set that up. Most yeah, likely. There's not a lot of heroes that can do it. And SF is definitely one of them that has like this crazy amount of burst. But uh, as you said, it has to be like kind of all at once. So then you still have to worry about like tornadoes and cold snaps and various other nuisances. Totally. And it's time like the damage is that bad anymore with like the way you can build the Quas Wax. Like that used to be one of the problems with Quas Wax is like, oh, well, you'll lose it on the, the last hits, but they picked the SF. So he's already going to be relying on getting his souls and using the Shadow Rays at the start. So that's going to help no one get those like first little bits going for his hero and kind of skip over that problem that Quas Wax Invoker has and Ooh. already magicals at half HP. Yeah, that's kind of tough. He's gotten a couple of different denies here, seven and two versus three and zero, oh, and using that cold sap to interrupt the uh, the raise usage as well. Um, damn, that's uh, that's that's going to be a little bit interesting to watch because normally you you are counting on those raises to get you to those early levels, but I guess he already has a hit level three. Uh, meanwhile, no one can have this other creep wave coming in that should get him to his as well. We haven't talked about uh, this Dazzle at all, but uh, kind of an interesting pick, right? Not really a hero that we see on the four all too often. I feel like when I've been seeing it lately, it's just been the five or sometimes the three and trying to like rush it down with Necros. But uh, helpful for a, a Slark. Let's him kind of get out of the fight if uh, he tries to get initiated on and then he can regen himself back up. And then, of course, Dazzle just has uh, all the interesting uh, ultimate minus armor. We talked a lot about minus armor lately, it feels like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And it's just another hero that's going to be adding onto that pile. Yeah, and you know, it, some that I, I think a lot of people have have liked the idea of playing it in like sort of that more core-ish oriented role. Um, but playing in a four Zayat is a type of hero that gets a lot of farm, also, uh, depending upon the game. But this feels like it's one where he could maybe get into some decent farm early on. Could maybe play with Rezo uh, once he gets to level six too, and then they you know throw out a nice little bit of minus armor with the bad juju at level six, and then Rezo suddenly doing a ton of damage. So a lot of cool things to watch for, uh, definitely. Um, back towards mid, Magicals catching back up a little bit now, and probably, uh, like you were talking about, we're going to see them be able to head back to the side after pushing out the lanes and just farm up some jungle later. Uh, I'd like it if someone could come mid to uh, to mess with the SF at four minutes for the rune, because you know he needs the rune, right? Uh, he's already used his whole bottle. Uh, but again, the heroes, like Zayat's can at least hold Ilias up top, because Chris Slides can't be left alone, or else he's just going to get poisoned and, and walked at, oh. so... You, uh, yeah, you definitely do not want to lose this uh, this coin flip on the rune if you're magical right now. This is going to be pretty important. He's going to send out a salve and a mango. He can't rely on just the rune. Yeah, you can see that like the rest of it seems like, nah, you got to do that on yourself, buddy. It's We're going to go and hang out in our normal lanes. And be and cool you're not going to win that by yourself versus tornado and cold snap. Right. <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, no one actually is kind of low on mana right now and has a wave pushing into him. So we'll, we'll have to see how that goes uh, as magical is just going to probably be able to hold down bottom although it looks like slayer's already there so he can go top at least or not or he's yeah, gonna he's go bottom by no one he just has to hope he's like all right well 
I set him to top and oh, swinging it. One of my favorite. <laughs> he just denies it. <laughs> oh, poor magical. Oh, that sucks. But at least, like you said, he did get that uh, mango in the south. So that helps yeah. a little bit. And then, I mean, it's going to be five minutes anyway. So now you have to try and hold at least one of the boundary runes. Ideally, two is always good for your guy. But uh, they, with that rotation, is what we're talking about, though, because your support went mid to try and help get the rune. And because of that, uh, keeping your heroes on the lane from VP helps apply enough pressure for the kill. And then afterwards, Slark just going to get salved up by Solo. So he's going to be back up full afterwards, getting that kill on the Beastmaster. Really nice pickup there. Man, that uh. sucks. Like, your support goes mid to secure a rune. The rune spawns on the other side, and then your offlaner is first blooded. <laughs> yeah, that's not a great series of events for Na'Vi. Um, again, not like game ruining. Ooh, up top, though. Nice catch there onto resolution. One more punch coming in from the tower. And Ilias, they get the kill. Crystallize and Ilias comboing together for a kill. All right, well, they will play aggressive enough to, uh, to get the banner. And also, this ward is spotting a courier coming through by Slayer. And uh, we'll see if this thing can dance itself to survival. But I think Solo's courier is going to go down. Sl Slayer's on the hunt. This yeah. poor Drodo. Oh, oh, oh Drodo. Gosh. Jukes. Juke, Juke, Drodo, Juke. What a guy. Oh, he's going to get the <laughs> other one, though. There's, oh, no. He gets the oh, better no. one. Slayer. And then Grimstroke's coming back, too. Oh, like, oh, okay, hit <laughs> it's a massacre. Double kill. Was that the voice? Did I do it good enough? Oh, God. Yeah. They got up top instead. <laughs> hmm. All right. Loss is all over the map right now. They got those couriers. That's something. These support heroes are leaving their course. A lot of double. flaming in a pub. They kill off the Beastmaster. One more punch with that rotation coming from no one. <laughs> Where were you, Slayer? I was killing couriers. <laughs> <laughs> what else was I supposed to be doing? That's uh, that's a painful one. Yeah, he's, he's not having a great time so far. Now, one thing uh, Ilias has been up to, of course, is stacking because he's keeper of the light. Uh, how how good are the stacks? I see one double, two double, so two two double camps prepped up here for his shadow fiend or ember. Hopefully, his shadow fiend. And Magical's gonna go on a little prowl, see if he can find perhaps some stacks that uh, the radiant have saved up. Not going to find any, though. He checks it and says, yeah, not worth my time. Yeah, it's unfortunate for him. Uh, was maybe potentially looking for a bounty rune there as well. Does have that haste. So if things do get a little bit testy, he could like make a rotation to kill. But he's actually hanging out there, and there's a creep wave hitting his tower. So yeah, Magical actually losing out on a lot here uh, for this little jaunt into the jungle. But I wonder... Yeah, I don't know what uh, they're assuming on the Radiant is going on right now. The Dyer are going to scan just to confirm that Clark is indeed still behind the tower. But now the rotation down bottom from no one. Looks and like another top side dead. able to find the kill onto Resolution. So trade-offs back and forth. It looks like VP are going to lose the Dazzle and the Pango while Crystallize lives. Yeah, Pasha lived too. They couldn't uh, get the finish. They kind of miscommunicated with the Inkswell. I thought no one was going to like Ghost Walk and run down with the Inkswell, but I think it must have been a cooldown for Invoke or something. I'm not sure. Or he just grabbed the wrong spell. But it was not timed uh, the way Solo thought it was going to be. Right. Uh, Mango Tree picked up. Magical going to start finishing off these uh, stacked up creeps here. Giving a little bit of that extra experience over to Ilias. And of course, the nice little combo here. We always talk about Ember and Coddle, but Shadow Fiend and Coddle is also pretty hype. At least for farming. Not really for fighting, though. I mean, true enough. Kind of okay, I guess. The quad rays. Who would have thought? The, what's the, the octet raise? You got to get that going by the time the other one's up. But poor old Zayat. No point up in the grave at all. Wouldn't have mattered anyways. And they get that kill. And it's Arcane Rune Bottom where Magical is going to try and run down and get it. But no one already heading that direction is going to see if he can sneak it away or at least go for a deny. Can't get there in time. Good play by Slayer. And Solo was actually a little worried there. TP mid just in case. They're bringing through Rezo with the ulti, but he's spotted by this dire ward. So they're going to play off to the eastern part of the tower. And if they want to go for this dive, it's going to be long communicated to Na'Vi. Oh, he gets the brooch too. Nice quality item for the team on Na'Vi. That's so big. These like little moments, right? Where you, you are able to scout the rotation coming in and so stop dead. it from being a kill on the <laughs> Shadow Fiend. I mean, Slayer will die, but that's magical living at the very least. Uh, Slayer actually, almost lived there. That wait a minute, time. Rezo getting right clicked. He's dead. Crystallize makes the rotation. So Navi, they give up 
one kill on the well actually maybe magical's in trouble now ilcw comes in both safe laters making the full rotation over Coddle trying to keep Magical alive. Another round of the raise. The kill is there, though, and LTW just pops the ulti, runs away, and just like that, are Navi overextending yet again. Uh, no one trying to chase down Ilias. A punch is not quite enough to finish him. No one goes down. Just absolute madness in the jungle as LTW tries to pounce away. Crystallize still has him in his sights. He gets a little bit of extra mana, but uh, the Slark is already away. He doesn't actually have a TP, but... Uh, rather, enough mana for the TP, but they won't be able to get the kill. It's going to hang out for a little bit. <laughs> uh, yeah, again, the ink swallow, not comboing up the way they think. No one just, like, misses it on Coddle under the tower. Uh, rough dives there. they got to temper this aggression a little bit here, because now this SF and the Ember are starting to get a little bit of a lead here. 3,900 net worth for Magical as he's still hitting creeps. And now they want that 10-minute outpost down bottom. They want to control both of them. And they're... Oh, no, oh. the tornado! Well that done. Interrupting. But they will get the kill under Rezo yet again. My man is struggling. Warden 4 and 1. Crystallize able to dodge away from that Inkswell. Solo getting chased down. But Cold Snap on a Crystallize. Gets the jump away with that Remnant. Slayers come with a haste room, though. Round 2. Let's go. Do they want to chase? Remnant forward. Slight of Fist dead. And no one in LTW looking to chase Crystallize. He actually doesn't have any more Remnants. But they won't yeah. be able to find him. That's so much damage on these like lower armor heroes. I mean, he's got four armor. It's not even that bad. But with the Blightstone, he takes like 300 damage from that slight. So, I mean, where, where do you feel like we're at in sort of the, the pace of the game right now? Because we sort of set this up to be Navi hitting strong early and, and VP just trying to get Slark farmed and be a late game team. Do you feel like VP are, are doing okay? I think... Uh, I think it's going about as you would kind of expect. I think not, VP made a couple of mistakes, so the lead is actually a little bit higher in Navi's favor than maybe one would have guessed at this point. But like Magical is going to build into the drums. Uh, Posh is going right into the Helm of Dominator, so it's it's almost time for them to like sync up and just start forcing these towers. Yeah. I think there is some concern because I actually think they have really good heroes for fighting around towers right now between the Invoker and the Pango. Uh, especially like this bottom area is nice for Pango with like all the terrain that you can bounce off of, but they're kind of taking advantage of the fact that VP aren't ready to fight and taking this tower down much earlier uh, than we've seen before. They're going to force out the Glyph now just for the multi-shot. And that little right click coming up to the high ground there might signal uh, that there was a ward in there. Actually, there isn't one. They're, they're committing. They brought four heroes down here, and Rezo, again, might be in trouble. Uh, with the Ember's going to put a ton of damage very quickly with this Coddle next to him. Yeah, he does have the roll away if things get a little bit too dicey, but Pasha in the area isn't even going to have to use the roar. So they take down Resolution yet again. I love this commitment from Navi to just take this tower. This is great. Dire Side is supposed to control these Ancients, and taking this is going to make it even easier. And now Slayer is starting something onto no one here, but he's going to start running back. Does not get hit by the Bolas. Chris Lai is going to grab the neutrals instead, but I don't think they hit detection anyway. So, yeah, I mean, they would have had a sentry, I guess. Maybe they could have done something, but... It definitely has that feel of just VP try and dodge away from these fights where they can. They're accepting little losses here and there. I mean, I think Resolution can't be happy about the way that his game has gone. He's five of the team's nine deaths. But at the same time, you know, they had this tier one tower for a little while. We'll see how it goes, but Navi is starting to really hit their stride. Yeah, this is perfect. All they can do is kind of like delay from no one right now. Uh, if the Pangos not going to be there because he's like the big setup for the actual fight. He starts it, but he's under vision. Like, it doesn't look like a great way to, to kick this one off. Round two and yet again. Just uh, just keep forcing this tower, and because they have this tier two taken down bottom, that's going to keep pushing and threatening the tier three, just like constant damage over time and giving them tons of info when no one's pushing it out. Here's the punch coming in from Navi. They yeah, do hello. again find Magical. He's caught for the moment. Roar going to land, but that just means that it hits the SF again with the ball. And the tower is still standing, but the rotation slayer comes back in the cube of death, wanting to find somebody to latch onto, but doesn't hit. He can't get him. All right. Yeah, that fight got a little bit messy. Ilias uh, was a little bit too far out to get the Will O' Wisp on because Solo hit him with the Soulbind as well. So then he got stuck and couldn't get uh, any sort of a save there. Of course, it's not really going to stop the uh, the Pango, but still. Right. A little frustrating. Great steal from Slayer. If you guys have ever played Rubik versus Pango, this is just like, it is way better than maybe it even looks. If you've never actually played the matchup, it's incredible. Like, <laughs> the instant cast is just unbelievable on this ability. 
so like yeah. you press the button and suddenly you're just like rolling into people. It is much better than Pango's version. I mean, plus it looks cool, obviously. Oh, yeah. You gotta get the high enough level for it, for sure. LTW will be able to escape there, going into his ultimate, and it's actually gonna be drums picked up for Slurk, so again, just trying to hold back this aggression that's gonna come out from Navi. Still only a 2,000 gold lead, but as you had said, it's a uh, you know, very scary time right now to be VP. If you get caught at, if you get pulled into a big five-on-five -five fight, Navi can definitely win that. Yeah, and now that they've like kind of done their homework down bottom and pushed that out, like Rezo's been dedicated down here to shoving this back. I'd like to see more control up here, trying to think about Roche, uh, trying to control this area for your team. Mm -hmm. you need to get that helm. They're very close. That's a, a big jump up in the, the Beastmaster's power. Resolution also is going to get into the Vlad. So more of these like little fighting oh. oriented items now, but they're smoking to the Beastmaster here. That's a uh, really dangerous smoke. I don't, I don't know about this one. I mean, they're they're going to lose solo at the very least. I don't know if they lose any more, but um, yeah, that that one is a little unfortunate for them. Resolution fair. I would not have guessed that they were five heroes down there. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'll give them that. That's fair. Yeah, it's weird because there's like no objectives for them to take down here. Slayer. Yeah. Oh my god, just touches. Resolution's like, man, I thought there were trees over here. What's going on? <laughs> no <laughs> cares. <laughs> just literally no cares. <laughs> Resolution's gonna walk away. Uh -oh. that, uh, did that hawk see? Hawk. I can't really call that thing a hawk. It's a pterodactyl. Actually, it's more like a petrodon, I believe. Pushes Something. glasses up nose. Yeah. <laughs> a quetzal. Um, I know. Oh, well, they spot him now. All right, Resolution walks back into trouble. And there's the roar. There's the kill. Slayer takes Swashbuckle this time. I think that his Rolling Thunder was wearing out. Okay. So 6 to 12. Navi's lead is growing uh, ever so slightly, but they haven't really taken any objectives since that Tier 1 Tower mid. Um... I guess maybe waiting on their next item, possibly. Uh, you'd mentioned the Helm of the Dominator. It's done for Pasha. Uh, you're looking for the Deso to be finished on the Ember and then the BKB on SF. But that one's still pretty far away. You know how when we had the the bounty runes popping up every five minutes, it felt like you you were just like chained to the or not the bounty runes, but like the outpost every like five minutes and like you're chained to them. And then it was just like we had that patch where like every couple of seconds it felt like you had to be running to the next objective with like yeah. runes and bounties and all that stuff. I feel like we're kind of there again where like no one wants to push because like they just did the outpost, but now it's 17 minutes, you want the neutral item. So like you don't want to go crazy because you're about to get all these neutrals and maybe that's just kind of holding them back. Yeah, that could make sense, definitely. And, and now, you know, we're about to get closer to that 17 minute mark. They find another kill on the solo uh, and they're going to try and control the map here. It, I mean, the scary part about all of this, of course, is that ILTW is kind of just free to do whatever he wants. Uh, he's keeping up with the Ember Spirit, almost about a thousand gold behind that SF as well. Uh, but actually, down bottom, they find Zayat going to get that kill as well. I mean, are Navi? I, are they going to try and like force him back to defend high ground? I mean, they're doing a great job of abusing this, this space that they've taken down here, but these kills aren't worth that much, uh, as you guys are aware. Kills are not like the most valuable thing at the moment, and you can't really take a tier three. So I, I don't know. I, I would be curious if they get something here. Maybe Beastmaster is enough because he has maxed out Aura with the Catapult that this is doing something, but one glyph uh, and uh, they didn't get a whole lot. Yeah, I mean, Magical is mid right now. So I, I think that they maybe just forcing some people back to, to base and then they try and re-go again afterwards um, or something like that. I don't know. It's kind of weird, but they, they will back out now. Uh, scan hits. So Virtus Pro have a good idea of what's happening in this game as no one going to throw out a tornado up onto high ground just trying to slow people down a little bit um and vp in the meantime they do have a smoke but feels like a very risky proposition this is looking better though like they got their little red blob just moving through radiant territory now they're gonna try and force something onto this tower too mm -hmm. and we're still waiting on vp to kind of find that big moment mind you it's getting closer and closer again kind of like last game uh because the levels are starting to stack up and no one is uh, level 12 it's some pretty mean team fight right now, but they can't lose Rezo again. Good grave. Yep, nicely played. Zayat just has the two points in it there, but recognizing that is the goal of my hero now. I have to keep these heroes alive. 
That was a defensive Soulbind and defensive Tornado, though, so not, not a great way for that to start out for them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, the Tier 1 tower is still standing up top, but it looks like it's Navi that want to try and take this mid-Tier 2 tower. Crystallize gets the Deso hit onto it. Ilias chased down a little bit by Resolution. Ghost Scepter out. ILTW is going to be found. Slap, pull back in, Roar. He didn't get the Dark Pact off. He's in a ton of trouble, but the turnaround is there with the Disarm. Holy crap, they barely keep him alive. Now Slayer stealing that Rolling Thunder, trying to run down ILTW. Has him in his sights, but can't do anything. So far, only the Coddle has died. So Na'Vi, maybe a little bit of an overextension there. That was a great play to keep the Slark alive, though. Yeah, but they have Slark, Pango, and Invoker, so the chase is very real. They have to decide now is Na'Vi, are we just going to keep backing, or are we trying to hold this high ground? And uh, LTW is going for the big, long wraparound. And one, but can't quite get him. The clumsy net going to connect onto Ember. Silence, out of mana, out of time. And Crystallize goes down. That is a lot of gold into Resolution's pocket. And now Finding Slayer, VP have been unleashed a little bit here as they take down another two of Na'Vi. And that was right at the bounty timing. They do manage to get one still for Ilias and uh, the Radiant. They can move right into the Roche Pit. Oh, take well, advantage of the scenario and use that alacrity. This is so huge. If they can get this one right now, I mean, 20 seconds until Ember's back up. Um, they kind of have an inkling that this is happening. Ilias is going to charge up the Illuminate, but Roche is already almost dead. So they have an idea that this is going on. They're moving over with Magical. He preemptively pops that Essence Ring, trying to run into position. Oh, what's your best case scenario here, though? These, these, yeah, uh, I don't know. It's scary. Pasha moving in. Jump in. Blake Roar able to snatch the Aegis to LTW. So VP get the Aegis. But Navi get the Roche kill. And I think that VP are much happier with that situation. Yeah, he had the Hawk Vision. So it was uh, nice like to take advantage of that. Because you know you're going to have that perfect timing. But uh, I don't know how worth that is. Yeah. I mean, if you can get it, obviously, it's amazing. But... It just, it was dropping too, too quickly. And now, Virtus Pro, despite being 4,000 net worth down, it feels like there's been a turning of the tides. Smoke up. They have to be careful, though. This Ember is still really scary if he can get his damage out, right? Like, sitting with the Deso and everything, they preemptively rolled there from Rezo. Mm. VP are starting to feel themselves. The Alacrity Catapult. Love to see it. Yeah, this is uh, this is spooky now. I mean, Navi, is there any change in their game plan? Do they just have to keep going regardless? I mean, their back foot isn't that good because they don't have like great initiation. Um, I, in fact, they don't really have any initiation right now. Their best initiation is the Ember, but Crystallize doesn't like have enough uh, mobile heroes with him. I don't think uh, to just like jump into five. You know, <laughs> this is good though. All right, we got Look the blink off. Chase forward, trying to find it. VP, no one. Can he live? Pulled back in yet again. The leash, though, is on to two. They got to be real careful here. The poison touch onto both of them. Leashed up. No one still trying to control. Navi does a lot of damage, but is it going to be enough? Zayat, he's going to be leashed up last second. They get the kill. That was the stolen leash by uh, Slayer. Well done to break the TP. Uh, the Radiant Slark, though, unlike this Rubik, is up top. Pushing into that tower with the catapult, so getting some pressure on there. Trading his Dazzle's life for it, but that will keep the lead in Navi's favor. Just uh, their, their whole game plan, as you kind of said, is indeed very, quite slowed down just because they lost it on this Aegis, and it gives ILTW a very annoying freedom right now. Yeah, careful, Crystallize. That man is getting low. Gotta be very careful. Does not get the root there. It's still on cooldown, but ILTW is gonna stick around this area. I mean, I think that, you know, with the Aegis and everything else, he can play just this aggressively if he wants. As long as he saves his ulti, because his ulti is a pretty free escape. I did not have a lot of answers versus it. Yeah. And the 16, 4,000 gold lead. And I, I will say it's it's refreshing to see, like, a blink dagger on Beastmaster. I feel like that was, you know, all the rage for a long time. It kind of went away and... You got all these big, like, Aura, Vlads, and Helm, and, you know, whatever else you wanted to get along the way. Just, like, some good, solid initiation. It's nice to have it back. I concur. <laughs> I mean, Necro's getting nerfed a little bit. I'm sure helped a little bit uh, in that regards. But, 
The only thing, the, you know, there is a problem with Flick Dagger. Flick Dagger is like no stats, obviously. So right. your whole like farming potential is quite a bit slower. You know, if you think if you had Necros right now, all you got with the Blink Dagger so far was one kill on a Dazzle. So then you wonder like, oh, if I didn't spam my Necro once, yada, yada, yada. But it's uh, it's VP who are moving on the hunt right now. They don't have the best vision because they're fighting versus a Beastmaster. So he's always been keeping tabs on like where they've been warding and everything. And uh, even good Dire Scan here. We'll scout exactly where they're all sitting. Mm-hmm. And will Navi capitalize on this, though? They send the Borans, and uh, yeah, they spot the Invoker. Okay. Also got a little bit of vision over there from the uh, Rubik and the Shadow Fiend. Blink forward. Pasha spots out that Dazzle, trying to bring him down at the start. BKB reaction time. LTW trying to turn now and catch this Rubik. Wasn't able to find that kill. Resolution rolls through round two, trying to take down Slayer. Still not happening. Rezo is going to be chased by the full oh, rundown. Oh, my God. God. <laughs> All right, that was dope. He's <laughs> beating the drum before killing him. <laughs> that was awesome. And the buyback from the Dazzle, too. Well, the way they played that, too, right? They completely ignored LTW. LTW was sitting there next to a boar and underneath the hawk. And Anavia just like, do not touch the stupid Slark. Just, he's got an Aegis. It's not worth it. Target the Dazzle. Target anyone else that they've got. And Rezu continues the, the rough match here. As he's the one brought down at the end of that one. Oh, Fire no one's Solar down. Crest. It yeah, it's... Close to it anyway. I, I, so the panel was saying that, like, the, the the late game, this Slark is just going to be that big raid boss. And I can kind of see what they're coming from. But, like, how, how worried are you about sort of Ember Spirit with Coddle late game? Like, is that enough to sort of deal with them? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of a gimmick. Slark is definitely the real deal in the late game with, like, the Slark, or with the Scotty, rather. I feel like that item change is oh. pretty amazing, this hero. He just, just expires, and he goes nice. down. Dude, that timing. Yeah. <laughs> that's a pretty good gimmick. Jeez. Give me that. So you, you, you think that it's, I mean, it's, like, good, but not, you know, game-breaking. Slark's still going to be the big bad man if they can get there. He should be, yes. Uh, like, right. I mean, he's still a ways away, right? Because I think in this game, he's probably going to need a BKB to reach max potential, which isn't very fun for Slark in a lot of matches. But like when he's dealing with this, uh, the Reckoning of Souls, Fear, and then you have the uh, just like overarching Will of Wisp, plus just a Rubik's doing whatever that he wants this game. I would be a little bit worried about that. I like this aggression, though, from Navi. I think that's what they were missing last game, right? Just like keep pressing, trying to abuse the advantage that you've built up. And uh, Blink Dagger, you know, Pasha, he just wanted the point and click this time, right? Mystery yeah. adventure. He doesn't want to have to throw that spear and maybe miss. True enough. Shadow oh, Fiend. No one will be such a good target. Kill. Good there, but the lift up afterwards, the roar on top of it. Resolution trying to stop the aggression with the roll, but it is not going to happen. Hoof stomp afterwards. Now Rezo may be a little bit in trouble as well. Now he's going to be able to make the escape. So they find another kill there onto the no one invoker. 10 to 21, 31 kills in this 27 minute game. And Navi, 7,000 gold up in spite of losing out on that Roche earlier. Yeah, this BKB comes over crystallized. It is uh, going to be a problem. We've already seen the power of the BKB for, for Magical in this game. It's just let him stand completely tall in these engagements. There's like nothing that concerns him right now. But once he pops that. As the timing wanes, sure, things will be a little bit more difficult for him, but there's plenty of fights left uh, for Na'Vi where they should be ahead. And uh, I mean, this still comes back to the fact that this game would be so much worse if they didn't get that Aegis on the side yeah. of EP, right? Like, if they had just been able to play Flowchart, throw it on the side of Na'Vi and take those towers and rotate up and, and take the Aegis, they would be in a, a much worse scenario than just AK down. And uh, we're going to be looking for that now as we move into the second Roche in about uh, 50 seconds, but... For now, Chris Slides gets uh, probably the best, I feel like, neutral item for Ember, at least in the way he plays now, just because, like, Slide of Fists, of course, means you're hitting multiple heroes, and to all of those heroes, he's now applying a minus six and a minus five armor reduction. Mm. That puts, like, even Slark is just heavily hit by that, you know? That's like zero armor on Pango. It'll be down, like, for well, and you've got all these other auras that are built with it too. Magical is there as well. They find the Invoker yet again, and he is getting beat down. No armor, no answer. And there is a roll through coming onto both of them, but look at Resolution just get completely tanked through on this one. Now they're trying to run away with LTW, but Ember is on the case. 
The punches are there. He's got another round of the sleight of fist chains in just a second as LTW makes his way to the high ground, trying to escape Remnant Chase yet again. Rooted does have that dark pack, but LTW, I mean, he might just take him on a little merry chase, though. I, I don't know if they're going to be able to find this full finish. Uh, there's the lift now, continuing to run after him. He's still running away. Space created TP out. Is it enough? LTW's gone. All oh, right, that okay. works. Did not have a spell uh, stolen with the stun. So, yeah, it makes some space. Stops them from getting uh, more after the victory engagement, but they already got the uh, the buyback on the invoker. That That's the big victory that they've achieved. Because now that Solar Crest is just even further away, trying to make that Slark a big raid boss by helping out with that. And, of course, against all this minus timer we've seen, it would be very nice to have that for their team. But... Uh, I like how they're just committing right onto uh, either the Invoker or the Slark would be like the two best heroes to kill, right? At the start of these fights. But you know the Slark has this natural defense mechanism in the Dark Pack. So the Invoker is just like super free. Uh, yeah. No one probably playing a bit too forward in these these fights, but that kind of comes down to their heroes, right? They have double supports that can't be in the front line. Dazzle and uh, the Grimstroke. And then Rezo is uh, kind of paper at this point because... I don't know. It's just a pango to the side too many times. He's richer than the Invoker, but... <laughs> oh, my yeah, God. I guess he feels like he just can't get his spells off if he's at the very f forefront. Like, he wants that uh, side initiation or something. He will have a blink soon. Yeah. I mean, that's the, the issue is, like, all of these items are just coming a little bit late. Like, think about if that was, you know, a couple of minutes ago or whatever when these fights were going on. They do find LTW yet again waiting for that roar until after the Dark Pack. LTW nowhere left to go. He does get jump out and resolution. No, poor resolution. Two punches come through. There is a grave to keep him alive for the moment, but the chase down coming from Crystallize, the root, the fade bolt, and he is done. Oof. Yeah, I'm sure Slayer was just hoping he was going to pop the ulti, to be honest. <laughs> waiting and waiting. It's like, yeah. oh, come on, go for it. Try and escape. Damn. 12,000 gold lead now, and Navi have just. I, mean, I talked about it earlier just a punch in the jaw across Virtus Pro's mouth. This is this has been a, a hell of a game from them. The the shock and awe strategy is uh, coming through. Yeah, just rocking them before they're ready for it. I uh, have not figured out what position four Dazzle does yet. It's been thirty minutes. <laughs> he graves people so that they die I later. <laughs> I don't know, man. Once he missed out on that like lane domination aspect, we saw they did manage to get like a couple kills on the side lanes because of like the Grimstroke and the Dazzle, just able to pressure top and pressure the bottom. But uh, once the five man starts, this Dazzle just he can't really like sneak and push waves mid. They they oh, get the stun. Well, they they did. got him. Chain Fairland comes in, full pull down. LTW tries to make the escape remnant chase forward and. This dude is dead yet again. Pasha finding the kill that time and no buyback 70 seconds. What are Navi going to get in this time? Roche is available if they want it. I believe they do. They had a courier in here before as well, so I'm pretty sure they know this is up. And again, with all this minus armor, Roche down to five armor. We'll help cut through. Oh, that was a... Oh, yeah, there we go. Sunstrike, we'll scout it. That is, all right, uh... there we go. You got your blink dagger. Let's go. <laughs> There's no way. <laughs> There's no way. Oh, yeah, I thought you meant that he was going to go in and try and save it right there. Uh, get oh, the no, no. I, I was making a joke about it. Yeah, yeah. he's running a tree line. <laughs> going, Don't worry. You, you were on. Um, well, Chris Lies is going to spot a DD in the bottom side of the river. And I think it is time to party. Um, I don't know if Ember's going to be able to finish off this AC in time. But, man, Minus Armor is back in full effect. This is... This is a, a terrifying group up draft, and oh, he actually took the presence effects buildings. I feel like yeah. I don't see that like ever anymore. Even in games where people are playing this five man strat, I don't see it taken. Well, I can appreciate that. That's gonna make this thing even worse now. Minus eighteen right now. While Chris Lies gives it a little love tap too. Oh my god! Yeah, that's insane. Um, he doesn't even have that AC yet. But I mean, they are gonna back out for a second. Maybe just gonna wait for that next creep wave. Just need the lag use. pause to so hold on. They need to be able to do the uh, the voice lines, the prepare for a lesson. Isn't that the Ember one? I think that is, right? I believe so. Yeah. Great. God. Navi. I mean, I mean, is this just what you need to do? Just like pick a bunch of aura minus armor heroes? Is is the problem Coddle Ember? Like, I, I'm I'm trying to figure out like what the issue is with this VP lineup where they just can't fight. Is is it all down to that Dazzle 4? I don't know. Uh, I think they uh, 
they needed like Slark fights with um, Inkswell and Pango at kind of the start of this game. They just kind of missed out on the window where their own fights could have contested Navi. Like, uh, and the winner of those fights, this game could probably look equally the other way if they had won those kind of engagements, right? And instead, it's like this Invoker way up top with this this Slark, and suddenly you're playing from behind on the other heroes. You know, I, I think it was uh, very important to try and secure your team a lead uh, at the earlier portions of this game. Doesn't hurt having tower push as well, which is something that Navi have that they don't really have for VP. <laughs> True enough. You know, so it's like taking that early uh, line of towers in the bottom lane, I think just gives you so much information as the dire. Plus yeah. they have these like high mobility heroes for the kills, like just crystallize. If, when you kill all those towers and you have a snowballing Ember Spirit and there's like these support heroes trying to push out waves like where he's playing right now, they're just food. And we saw that what, like four times in a row, a support hero just died down here. Or resolution. Um, who's well, you know. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't want to say it, but yeah, that's how it's looked this game. Um, I'm I'm with you. I, that 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 like opening up of the map, I think, is something that a lot of people talk about. But um, being able to actually see it in action right here and basically say, all right, there's an area of the map where we know we can find a kill because we're controlling that entire other side of it, and there's no support that can show up. Yeah, it's tough. Uh, really, really tough. And Aegis still around for another three minutes. Magical with the Daedalus BKB. Uh, and also 5,000 gold in the bank. Um, could, could invest that into something if he wants, but just holding off for the moment. Might not even need it. That is a lot, though. That just puts him like, on par with the Slark. I guess Slark's only in 2k as well, to be fair. He has a Solar Crest. And I guess no one finished his off, too. God, look at how quickly these buildings go down, though. And he just a couple quick shots there under resolution, and he almost goes down. Even with the freaking craggy coat it's just not enough like you need everything right now against navi and a bit more and you don't have it wow so, w is searching for answers in the jungle i don't know if he's gonna find any give me a tiered six item please just at least something. there's gold yeah i need a bug here val <laughs> all right well there goes the tier three tower mid it happens very very quickly uh they do have a heaven's halberd on slark but Lift up there on to Pango is it, Resolution. Is it a <laughs> oh, man. Because uh, he's not there. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's, he's off and away. Zebby's like, they can't push if I get the creep wave. I mean, he's right, though. They can't fight. Like, I, I'm not trying to say he's doing the wrong thing. No. I don't know when the turnaround occurs, but they, they're going to try and find it now. They've got the backline invoker looking for the stab. See, now here comes the slayer. Oh, not. Nope. That wasn't that wasn't it. Slayer finds him. Oh, oh no. Maybe it was. I'll take that you. Getting him. More staff. Run away. Magical. Just three shots solo in the base while Ilias gets down the big old ulti onto two. Slayer still in biz through all of this. The control is there. The roar has already been used. The continued beatdown of no one. He just completely evaporates. Resolution doing nothing. They get the stolen rolling thunder yet again. Slayer chasing. Trying to run down solo for his second life. But GG is called. That was a hell of a beatdown. That was so much five-man map movement from Na'Vi. They looked very well organized, and uh, they, they played with purpose in this game, you know? They just had this driving force of the Ember, just like running across the map in the Shadow Fiend Siege Engine to just walk down lanes, coddle, keeping you all 